Hi, my name is Anna Marie McCarthy, and I'm delighted to be presenting my research on the LGFA Research Pod. My paper was submitted as part of my Masters in Applied Sports Coaching in UL under the supervision of Dr. Phil Carney and aimed to explore how one club successfully implemented the LGFA Gaelic for Teens programme to retain teenage girls in sport. Before I go into the study, I'll give you a little background on myself. I'm a teacher in youth reach and have a Masters in Special Education and Inclusion. I played club football in London and Dubai, going on to be the chairperson of the Dubai Celts. Since moving to Ireland, I have been coaching juvenile hockey, camogie and ladies football and have recently completed the Sport Island Coach Developer course and my Masters in Applied Sports Coaching. The purpose of this study was to investigate why and how a grassroots club successfully implemented the Gaelic for Teens programme, to illustrate how they overcame any challenges and to use the evidence gained from the study to develop a how-to guide for other LGFA clubs to successfully implement the programme. The study was important for a number of reasons. National and international research has shown that taking part in regular physical activity has benefits for both our physical and mental health. Unfortunately, a recent study by Sport Ireland has shown that only 7% of adolescent girls aged 14 to 15 years old in Ireland meet the World Health Organization's recommendations of 60 minutes a day of moderate to vigorous physical activity a figure that is reflected globally and constitutes an international health concern. The LGFA Gaelic for Teens Coach Education Programme incorporates the Sport Island principles for success in retaining girls in sport. Reports by Dr Wesley O'Brien and Dr Irene Hogan have shown an increase in the percentage of girls meeting the recommendations for physical activity after taking part in the Gaelic for Teens Programme. Therefore, it is important to illustrate how the programme has been successfully implemented in order to provide guidance for clubs before, during and after they take part in the coach education programme. Methodology. Semi-structured interviews took place with four prominent members of a large LGFA club in a commuter town in Ireland. This, in addition to player and parent focus group data gathered by the club in 2019, was thematically analysed. Three key themes emerged from the data. The reasons why the club took part in the Gaelic for Teens programme, how the coaches applied their learning, and finally, what the coaches felt were the keys to successfully implementing the programme, which wasn't always easy. The main reason the club took part was to retain their teenage players. One coach noted, although their club wasn't seeing a huge drop off, they were losing a few each year and they wanted to keep as many of them as possible. Another mentioned that losing a few players can be missed by the bigger clubs. The club felt they had quite a masculine approach to coaching, given that most of their coaches were male. This correlates with international research showing that only approximately 30% of coaches are female. For this reason, they wanted to find out if there were specific approaches that would be more suitable to coaching teenage girls, and if so, how to implement them. Finally, the coaches felt that ladies football was not taken seriously by members of their wider GAA club. Like myself, many of you will be familiar with and frustrated by a version of this quote. Ah, bless. Look at them playing their football. Aren't they great? Moving on to the next theme. What coaches learnt and applied to their coaching. Similar to results from Dr Orla Farmer's paper on Gaelic for Girls, the club found that football was third on the players list for why they come to training. A coach said, one of the things we asked the participants, the girls, the players was, why do they come training? And football was third on their list. It wasn't first. It was for their friends and to have fun. That was the top two, friendship and fun. It was a real eye opener to the coaches. However, it's important to note that having fun and learning the technical and tactical skills of football are not distinct from each other. When activities are changed from low fun and as a consequence, low engagement leading to little learning towards more fun and arguably more engaging activities, they are likely to learn more. The course gave the coaches practical ideas on how to make sessions fun whilst progressing the players' tactical and technical skills alongside their athletic development. These were presented in the form of in-person coaching demonstrations, videos, session plans and time to discuss ideas with peers. In practice, the coaches described how they altered their session plans to give players time to catch up with their friends. They said they can chat for 10 to 15 minutes while they're warming up. They also introduced fun-based drills where they'd have a laugh and compete against each other. 
One of the athletic development videos gives the idea of a leapfrog race, which was a huge hit with my own team. On match days, they altered how they acted on the sidelines, taking a more positive, encouraging approach, where they praised the girls while they played and refrained from criticising. Coaches learnt to let players make their own decisions on the pitch, rather than trying to instruct them throughout the match, a theme which has been taken on in some competitions in the form of silent sidelines. One of the coaches felt a mixture of emotion when a player on his team told him what one, an opponent had said. We don't know how lucky we are. One of the players I was marking said, you're so lucky. Your coaches are so nice. All our coaches do is shout at us. He was delighted with his player's reaction, but saddened for the players from the opposing team who he felt were destined to give up football. The Gaelic for Teens programme gave the coaches practical information on player welfare, which they could use to inform their coaching and pass on to players. The coaches noted that the information was given in a practical format that didn't require them to be experts in the field. For example, they felt they would be more cognizant that there could be a number of reasons why a player might not be able to give her best performance on a given day. In addition, they could talk to the girls about the importance of fruit and vegetables, drinking enough water and getting enough sleep. The results of the club's focus group showed resoundingly that the kit could be a reason that girls give up football. Body image is important to all of us, but particularly teenage girls. Therefore, playing in jerseys that are too tight or too big can be extremely off-putting. The club averted the issue by buying an array of sizes. For example, they'd have two number 11 jerseys and a female parent would discreetly hand the appropriate jersey to whatever player needed them. Colour is another issue. The picture you see is from my own club and you'll note that they're wearing white shorts. We've since changed them to navy as we noticed that many girls were already wearing dark shorts in training. White is unsuitable due to being easily stained on the field through menstrual cycle leaks and is almost transparent when wet. The coaches recognised that at times it was themselves who were more concerned about winning than their players. When the focus is on winning, it can lead to players being left on the sidelines, only having a few minutes playing time when the match is already won or lost or coaches roaring instructions and sometimes criticism at players while the match goes on. Research has shown that an increased focus on competition over participation is one of the main causes for teenage girls dropping out of sport. Ironically, there is irrefutable international research across multiple sports that performance in early, early adolescence cannot be used to predict performance in adulthood. This can be due to a multitude of reasons, including the varying ages at which adolescents reach full physical maturity. Many of us will have watched under 14 matches when some players resemble fully grown women, whilst others still look like children. Or maybe you've coached a teenage player who appeals, appears like they'll never be able to concentrate for a full game, only to witness them maturing over what seems like only a few months. At the same time, you may have observed players who seem like they'll go on to make a county team at 13 or 14, only to be overtaken by teammates. In an attempt to win a match, coaches may wish to use players from a lower age grade. Unfortunately, this leads to a number of problems. When a player on the age is left on the bench and ahead of a younger player, they lose or have less opportunity to play, and this can lose, lead to them doubting their capability, in turn affecting their confidence and motivation to continue playing. All of this can eventually lead to these players giving up the sport. In addition, there are detrimental effects on the younger players who may end up being overplayed and lead to possible injury and burnout, which can also result in them giving up the sport. I asked coaches in this study to describe what moving to winning, moving from winning to participation looks like on match days. In terms of playing time, they had a motto which was, if you train, you play. If you don't train, you don't play. Whilst this is understandable, coaches would still need to be aware of the player who plays for multiple teams or sports to avoid them becoming overtired. Coaches can communicate with players and parents to stay on top of this. The coaches in the club agreed that all players should get time in every match, but varied in their opinion of how much time from a quarter to a half a match. It would be advisable for clubs to put into writing an agreed policy on playing time to ensure that the ethos is continued throughout the club and for future players. Coaches talked of entering as many teams as possible and taking advantage of the fair play rule in place in many competitions where you can field as low as 11 or 12 players. They advise if you've got 40 girls, put in three teams, and that means they'll all get the full 60 minutes rather than struggling to get them on the pitch. The club is also strict on only having girls play at their own age. 
They understand that smaller clubs may need to use younger players, but are adamant that this is not done at the expense of players on age. Rotating positions is another area where coaches learn from the Gaelic for Teens programme. Gaelic for Teens highlights the different maturation rates of teenagers and that some may not, may not reach full maturity until 17 or 18 years old. Therefore, deciding a child is a back, a mid or a forward in their teens and leaving them in those positions is not advisable in terms of player development. The coaches echoed this point by advising coaches within, within their club to keep rotating positions, giving every player exposure to different positions, which would help them to transition to the older adult teams. Interestingly, since taking part in Gaelic for Teens and changing towards a participation ethos, the club's adults teams have gone on to be more successful. The coaches spoke of how the Gaelic for Teens programme helped them to see the importance of planning and reviewing sessions and involving players in the process. One coach said, it's really about keeping their attention and keeping them participating through them being involved and understand, understanding why they're going, rather than just turning up to a training session not knowing what's going to happen next, and by the end of three months not knowing if they've progressed. The coaches plan, to plan by keeping two or three achievable goals over the season, which if they achieve then it's reviewed as a success and they move on to other goals. After Gaelic for Teens, they started doing player profile sheets where they'd ask the players individually what they wanted to prove, improve on and join them in with other players working on the same skills. Keys to success. The coaches praised the structure of the Gaelic for Teens programme as a major key to helping them understanding and ultimately implementing the relevant changes needed in their club. They referred to the practical ideas and demonstrations, having time to try them and feedback any problems as it wasn't just a one-off session. In addition, by meeting with other clubs, they were able to network with their peers and share ideas. The bespoke nature of the course allowed coaches to ask for help in specific areas that were relevant to them. And they also noted the knowledge and enthusiasm of the course leaders who were, in the main, female, former elite players. Gaelic for Teens inspired the club to formalise their in-house coaches support. They said we run a workshop every month where one of the coaches will take a specific skill. The coaches might say that the girls are struggling with kicking off their left foot. Would anyone be interested in running a workshop? They meet and reflect on all aspects of coaching to ask themselves, are we doing it right? Is somebody doing it better in the club? Is one of the teams in the club not doing well? Have we lost players? Did we miss something? The club experienced some resistance to change on coaching and administration fronts. And their advice to other clubs is to involve as many people in the process as early as possible. By involving and seeking the views of players and parents throughout the process, they were able to use this information to convince coaches and committees of the importance of making the changes. By involving and gaining the views and suggestions of everyone, there is a much higher chance of securing their buy-in to any changes needed. During the Gaelic for Teens programme, the club invited parents and players to focus groups where they explained the purpose of the programme and sought their views. One parent noted, there was an open forum. It's not just do as I say, everybody is involved with making the decisions, which she felt was an important factor in her daughter and her friends feeling a new sense of belonging to the club. People within the club who are motivated and inspired to lead change can be harnessed to help persuade others who may be resistant. In this club, they came in the form of a coach who was described as a tour de force, an unbelievable woman. She just keeps us all going, inspires all of us to keep at it. Another champion was a male older committee member who was described as the right gender and age profile and well respected in the club as a former coach. He was able to use his social leverage in order to convince the club's executive. Whereas in her own words, another coach said, were it to have been me on my own, nobody knew who I was, I had no background, so I could have failed. While she felt it was unfortunate that gender still matters for certain things, it did enable change to happen, and later the LGFA club went on to secure positions for females on the executive. This was the final piece of advice from the coaches. Just stick with it. Change can take a long time. In fact, it took over three years to implement one change the club felt it needed. Coaches recalled that in order to change coaches' mindset from instructing players towards involving and asking them questions, they just kept doing practice sessions. One said, I don't know how many times we did it. We did it indoor, outdoor. We just kept reiterating. We just kept at it and at it. This is also the case for playing time, rotating positions and goal setting for players. They just stick with it. They feel this has led to a cha to change in the culture within the club 
as newer, less experienced coaches replicate these practices. In summary, the participants in this study identified five keys to successful implementation of the Gaelic for Teens programme. The way in which the programme is structured, creating a coach's community of practice in their club, involving everyone in planning and decision making, finding champions who will inspire others, and finally, plain and simple, stick with it. I want to finish with a few quotes from the participants about Gaelic for Teens. There's a different mindset now. The women in the club are taken a lot more seriously. It was a massively positive experience for the girls. It bonded them as a group. It was an amazing programme. We loved it. We all still talk about it. Finally, thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope you took away some useful tips. Best of luck to all clubs applying to take part in the Gaelic for Teens programme this year.